Hey everybody, it's the Pantry Party Show with your host at DJ Blattner. It's another great week of the Pantry Party Show, giving you inspiration for while you're cooking. A lot more at home. Today's guest is a motivational speaker and improv guru. I can't wait to talk to her. At Judy Holler, we're coming at ya. So you guys ready? The Pantry Party Show is about to begin right now. Hey everybody, this is so exciting. We have a great, great, great guest. Okay, so here's the deal. This is a, in full disclosure. Uh, this is a girl crush. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to have her. At Julie, Julie, at Judy Holler, J-U-D-I, H-O-L-L-E-R. That's who's coming in. Let's get this party started. Page. Oh, I almost forgot this. Hello. All right. Oh Hello. My God. <laughs> Hello. Oh my God, I love that you have a disco ball. Yeah, oh, I mean, oh my is, God. It's a pantry party. party. Oh my gosh. At Judy Holler. I can't believe we're chatting. I love that we're chatting. And can I just tell you, I'm pretty much obsessed with your whole office situation or wherever you're at. The yes. wallpaper, the hot pink earrings. Like, it's a vibe, girl. I'm into Look, it. Okay, here's the deal. At hot... Oh, there goes my dog. Oh, oh yeah. Please, please, give it, we're give live. It. The deal we're is, live. is that I dressed completely for your book cover. You see? I wore my hot it pink It is so pink. chic. It is I, so chic. I love I'm it, girl. I'm talking I, to I, at Judy Holler. We've got to wear pink. I mean, your book is the most beautiful pink color you. ever. Yay! Look at that, baby. Here is my homeboy. So fun. Um, here's how I got familiar with you, Miss at Julie Holler. Yeah. Um, a girlfriend of mine was in the audience of one of your keynote speeches. Okay. And she texted me in the middle of it, and she was like, "I don't know if you've heard of this woman." She, her handle is at Judy Holler. You need to know her. She is so cool. She reminds me of you. She dresses so cute. She is so encouraging. And so I was like, well, you know, I don't know, I guess. I just, I flipped to your Instagram page. I was like, follow, fangirl. Oh, love. Oh, my gosh. I mean, so congratulations. I mean, this book, Fears Your Homeboy, is a big freaking deal. Thank you so much for that. And I love that you connected the dots for me there. I always love, you know, hearing about how people sort of stumble upon me, the work and all of that. And um, when you did and reached out to me on the Instagram DMs, I instantly looked you up and I became instantly obsessed. And we have a bunch of mutual friends. I spoke a couple of years ago at, for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Uh, so it was at McCormick Place. So I, I have a few dietetics followers and um, we have some mutual friends in common sort of through that world and 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 Jessica's Wag and Simply Be Agency and just some really cool people in Chicago you know I spent a lot of time there so um, we're you know I'm so thrilled to meet you and to be connected to badass women out there being brave enough to do badass things and to most importantly infuse who they are into that right and so fear is my homeboy really is this idea that we no longer chase this unrealistic notion of fearless right because it doesn't exist the goal right preach. can we take that mic and drop it for a moment preach <laughs> preach on that yeah I mean, I mean that's when you hear the title fear is my homeboy right you're giving us really the definition what that means to you is it's not about being fearless Right. It is about befriending your fear and finding a way to dance with it. And, and fear is my homeboy. It was sort of a fun, playful, pop culture way for me to describe how I have sort of lived with and managed my fear. And so this idea, and this is where I think a lot of us get stuck, especially women, you know, we think we have to be fearless, but really the goal should be brave. And the goal should be fearing our fear just a little bit less than we did yesterday. The goal is to be just a little bit brave braver than you were yesterday. And so Fear is My Homeboy sort of explores that idea. It presents the idea of fear experiments and experimenting with your fear. And then I just put out a little workbook called the Fear Boss Project that literally helps you take everything in the book and break it down and uh, put some tactical stuff behind um, how you can really move forward, especially in times like this when 
shit goes crazy. We have to figure out how to stay in forward momentum even when we're scared and even when things are disrupted. That's well, what I do. Amen to that. And what I think is cool is that you live by this principle. So I was yeah. reading up about, you know, how did it even come to be that you, who were in sort of this, the meeting space and like at, at nights doing improv at yes. the city in Chicago, right? So you, you had this life where you were, you know, very good at meeting stuff or whatever this is, nighttime's doing improv. And then you were on vacation and said, wait a second, I have a bigger mission here. Yeah. So improv really, you know, I studied professionally at Second City in Chicago. I'm an alum of their conservatory. So, you know, improv really doing that at night by and then by day doing corporate America really taught me so many things that I wasn't learning in the real world. Like in corporate America, in corporate America, I was being told to, to be myself, but not too much, to do whatever I want with the presentation, but call me first or send me an email and let me know, or you know, color inside the lines and fit in a box. And doing an improv, I was being told to be more of myself and to fail and to feel hard and to make mistakes and to get it wrong so I can get it right and to really turn up the volume on all the things that make me weird and to say yes and go explore with what's on the other side of that yes and so you know I it changed everything for me and most importantly it made me braver and so I was you know bossing up on an improv stage then I started bossing up in the boardroom at work and I started doing conducting all of these little fear experiments every day on purpose in order to sort of get braver. So they were really big things like quitting jobs and leaving toxic relationships and writing a book and starting a business. Sure. But you don't need to like jump off, a, off out of a plane or like free solo a mountain in order to prove to us that you're brave and to prove to yourself that you're brave. You can do small every things like getting on an Instagram live, like starting your own Instagram live show, posting your first selfie on Instagram or Facebook to get better at not caring what other people think. It could be speaking up first on a conference call or or um, picking up the phone and calling someone versus texting, listening to a new Spotify station. So fear experiments are just small everyday things. And the goal is to get you running the reps on getting outside of your comfort zone. Because once you, once you learn how to do that, getting more comfortable in this uncomfortable space, you set yourself free. Question, why are you so passionate about this? Uh, girl, I stuff? can't even, I can't even stop with it. And I have like back sweat right now. This is like my real, <laughs> this is my like real, I believe in this so much because it transformed my life. Listen, I'm, I'm self-made. You know, I, I started from the bottom. Now we're here, right? Like I put myself through high school, put myself through college. Um, you know, I have a, a mother who str struggles with mental illness. And so I had to find a lot of this for myself. It's why chapter one starts with love yourself because nothing works if you don't work and I have watched these ideas this idea of getting uncomfortable and starting to fall in love with the discomfort zone transform my life it has literally given me all the freedom that I have in my life and I think that's what we're really chasing personal freedom to do you know to do the things we want the way we want professional freedom to do the work we love with people that rock the way we want financial freedom so that when stuff like this happens we're not panicked because we have a plan and you have to get uncomfortable in order to do that. Help, think of your health. I mean, some people may like kale, but you have to get uncomfortable in order to do the comfortable thing, right? So you eat the kale and you take the vitamins and you do the good stuff for your health because you know it's gonna earn you a healthy lifestyle. So we do the uncomfortable stuff in order to earn the freedom we want. You will never have physical freedom or health freedom if you're not moving your body, if you're not eating well, if you're not taking the supplements, if you're not smiling and laughing. And the bottom line is this, if you want a different life than everybody else, if you want a different career, if you want a different set of health goals than everybody else and health results than everybody else, you got to be willing to do things different. And I have watched that time and time again change my life. So I believe like our mission, the fear boss mission, we call ourselves fear bosses, is that we believe our freedom lives in smashing comfort zones. So I'm on a mission to help people figure that out. I love it. And I love it. Okay. So you're so passionate. You can tell, like you said, I have back sweat in my track suit. Like I have all of this. 
Yeah. But the thing is, is that it is you're on fire about it because you have seen it firsthand yep. work for you. And now you don't feel like you want to keep this truth bottled up. You're, you're bursting at the seams to share it. And so you've done it through all of these uh, public speaking events. You've yep. done it through Fear is My Homeboy book. You've done it now as a podcast host for the yes. Fear, Fear Boss show. Yes. Uh, and now the workbook to really bring the book to life. So this is like, you obviously, you are, you are out there, you are doing this. Now, as a public speaker, did you start that Fear Boss talk before the book came? Or did you do the book and then start speaking on that? I love it. It was flipped. So I really, you, I wrote the book. I think there's some people that grow up dreaming about like, oh, I'm going to be an author someday. And while I'm so proud to be an author and to have a best-selling book that has done so well, I never really dreamed of that. I really wrote, uh, I knew I had to have a book because I was speaking. So I was really talking about making fear my homeboy and I had keynotes uh, that titled this and work uh, put on stage all the time around some of these ideas and then just brought it to life in my book. So I really wrote, I did it reverse. I knew that I wanted to scale my business as a speaker, as a teacher, as a trainer. And I knew I needed to be a big girl and write a big girl book if I wanted to do that uh, on the level that I wanted to do it at. And so I really wrote the book to be like, a, it's a, it was initially like a marketing tool and a, and a business card, an expensive business card, but a business card, right? And to really solidify and validate the curriculum that I was teaching on stage. And it's just sort of blown up into this whole Fear Boss community. And I loosely said fear experiments one day on stage and it turned into like this whole movement, this whole community. And yes, these ideas have changed my life, yet I get emails every day, DMs on the regular from OG fear bosses, from new fear bosses um, that are out there doing brave things. And that's when I knew, I was like, you know, this works. And this idea of, of changing our mindset around fear to sort of begin experimenting with it instead of taking it so seriously is the way we can make progress. And so we're collecting, and that'll probably be the evolution of the next book, this idea of just collecting so many beautiful stories so that people can sort of see themselves and the different faces of this community. Because I, I do, I think there is nothing better, right, than seeing like the before and after yeah. stories of people um, pushing through their fears like that. For sure. So were you always speaking about fear or did you sort of morph what your public speaking was as you were working on this book? Yeah, great question. So I started out speaking, um, you know, on, on personal branding and putting yourself out there and marketing stuff. And I was using improv to teach those lessons. And I ended up pivoting and um, really, you know, moving my work into more of a fear wheelhouse because I realized, well, okay, you know, the, the reason we don't put ourselves out there and the reason we don't do a half okay. of the things we really want to do is because we're freaking scared. And we have to figure out how to get out of our own way. And we have to figure out how to, um, you know, take action every single day if we want to really live a life that leaves us with no regret. And so that's kind of when I said, oh, well, shoot, maybe I should start talking about fear. And okay. it just evolved into Fear's My Homeboy, which some of this is in the book. You've obviously read, I can tell you. Jake, but this is genius right isn't it genius the idea of you're talking and then all of a sudden well this is what i say inspiration happens while you're doing the work yes so you can't sit around and have a billion dollar idea you right. gotta be out there hustling i call it the joy hustle oh like i love you're that out there doing yes. your thing and so you're like huh wait a second i i can see something that would be even more of service more helpful to all of us right yes. so then you start talking about fear stuff I downloaded, uh, and I love this, where you said, you, it reminded me, every day, showing up every day to do something like this. Yes. And this is your daily planner, that if people Yay. actually go to your website, yep. uh, which you can do through your link in bio, yeah. and subscribe right away, you get such a, I yeah. mean, so much great reading, but I love this daily so blog. Good. And it's, it's exactly what you're talking about. It's yeah. that three parts of like, do something for yourself, Say powerful yes. things to yourself. And then the ultimate, the, I mean, you've said it a couple of times, but to really stamp it with a ball, fear experiment. Fear okay. experiments. Let's say that is the best term. I, I call this guess and test. And so it's like, I don't know, just guess what you could do and test it out. Guess and test. Oh, I and love that. Same idea. Same mm -hmm. idea, but the fear experiment of saying, listen, 
what's going to be a little bit scary today. And it, like you said, it doesn't have to be like, oh gosh, leap off a building. Yes. It's like, no, it could be a little thing. It's like, you know what? I haven't been wanting to follow up on this email and I feel yeah. weird about it, but I'm going to do the follow up. Yes. You know, or yes. whatever. It's beautiful. So I, I definitely suggest everybody watching, if you oh. haven't already subscribed, even that one nugget of having your Thank you. your boss planner is phenomenal. And no wonder why people rally around this idea of fear boss. You know, we all would like to be the boss of our fear, right? And not yeah. being the boss of us. Exactly. And we all would like this idea of how do you freaking do this? It's great to have all your ideas, you know, at Judy Holler, like, what do you do? And you're like, here's what you do. Like, here's Every actionable you show steps. Up. Yeah, every day you show up, do yes. fear experiments every day, little yeah. things, and it grows. It's it just, it's such a beautiful thing. And the workbook, I especially love, work, I mean, I love worksheets. I love workbooks. Me too, me too. Why? It's actionable, right? It's actionable stuff. It's like, yes, reading big ideas is motivating, but what's really yeah. activating you in your life is like doing the work. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sitting down and doing the work and taking that time for yourself and being brave enough to dream big. And if you want a different life and a different company and a different career and a different um lifestyle than everybody else you have to be willing to do things different and working through i mean i do you know i love journaling pages i love um challenging myself and does it mean i'm perfect at it no does it mean there's days that i get off my schedule yes but the beauty of life and the beauty of anything is that every day you're reborn and you get a chance to do better than you did yesterday and that's the goal you just need to be a little bit braver than you were yesterday we don't need to have it all figured out so you know the tools i provide when you sign up for my little newsletter are prompts that you can print it's free and then you can use them and I write in my iPad. And so you can take them and just, you know, transfer them over in your iPad or print the sheets and use them that way or put them in your own journal. Um, but yeah, you're right. They are just, and you've got to, and I think it's also an accountability tool as well to say, you know what? And here's what I love about logging your fear experiments every day, even if it's just one little thing you did, uh, is that it, it reminds you, A, that you can do brave things and survive, which is a cool thing to look back on, but also it holds you accountable because there are a lot of times I'll hear from people that, oh my God, I'm in a rut or I'm in a rut personally or professionally or my business is in a rut. And I'm always like, well, have you gotten uncomfortable lately? <laughs> so we, you know, we play it too Call safe. It. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. You look at it in the face. It's like, what have you done different to expect something different? Exactly. Amen. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yeah. So uh, one of the things before we actually talk about your pantry and what you eat before. Uh, I'll take you into the kitchen. Bed. Oh, that would be great. Uh, the thing that I really am interested in is how interesting your pivot has been for a public speaker. So yeah. you are used to big audience, yeah. public stages of hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people. Yep. So you are doing for the first time ever a virtual keynote that if yes. we aren't, uh, you know, have the privilege of seeing you live or you're not going somewhere live lately, um, we can see you do your thing. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited about it. Now, I've done some virtual uh, events for my clients. So a lot of my contracts where I was supposed to be traveling and live in a keynote room on stage with uh, hundreds and thousands of people that were in these audiences, we've transitioned them to virtual events. So I've done a few of them, but I've never live streamed my keynote, which is like my baby. And it's going to be interesting because I do live improv. And so we're trying to, we're working through all that right now. How do we, first of all, nothing beats a live event. Nothing beats the energy energy of a room and getting volunteers from an audience and the whole room cracks up. There's, there is nothing like that. Yet the ideas in this talk are the ideas in this talk. And I believe we need them now more than ever. So we are taking what is a live experience and bringing it digitally for, for people it's the number one request I get. There are people that I get hired by private companies and I don't do a lot of public events. So there are so many fear bosses that just can't see the talk. And um, this is our way to, you know, support the business and earn a little money to pay the people that work for me, but also to give back to charity and to, um, to, to try something new, to experiment with our fear and to give these ideas at a really low cost to the people um, that are wanting them. So we'll link up to, you can link in buy and for my bio to register if anybody's interested, but it's gonna be a fear party. That's for sure. I could, I know. I mean, come on. Anything you do is gonna be a party, girl. That's why I was we're like, so excited. I'm nervous and excited. Party. 
perfect for the pantry party. Um, so, hey, one last thing before we go into your pantry. Okay. Uh, do you feel a lot of pressure? I mean, so now that you are this, you know, f the face of, right, uh, fear boss, like, do you feel a lot of pressure to, you know, constantly be brave and be pushing yourself? Or is it really, have you made it fun for yourself? A little bit of both. I, yeah. I, I try to remove the pressure, but I, and I think that's because I have such a supportive community and I think I do a good job of trying to show the fear bosses my real moments too, like the things I'm nervous about. And, you know, I don't always get on Instagram looking perfect and I have my good days and my bad and I tell them what I'm afraid of, you know? And so I, I think I've gotten a, uh, gotten a better handle on not being so worried about having to be brave all the time, but I'm brave most of the time. And again, all I'm trying to do is be a little bit braver than I was yesterday. Right. I mean, I'll give you a vulnerable moment. Like we are, we thought this virtual keynote and these registrations would go one way and it's just behind the pace of where we thought it would be. And I woke up yesterday and I was like, okay, I was saying to my husband, I'm like, I think I'm gonna cancel. I'm just gonna tell everybody, I'm gonna send an email and I'm gonna tell everybody, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't have enough interest because I feel like I'm gonna look like a fool and I'm gonna embarrass myself because there's like only 50 people there and you know, blah, 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 blah. And I feel embarrassed and, and then I'm like, wait, that's, that's fear. And what am I so afraid of? If one person on that live stream makes a change, like I could cry, like if they make a change, it's worth it, right? And who am, who am I letting fear boss me around on this? And so it's that I struggle with it too. And we get so worried about failing, about publicly failing, about embarrassing ourselves, about things not working. Guess what? Oh, well, we will either win or we will learn, but a fear boss will never lose. So I will show up next week and I won't lose because I'm going to learn something new and I'm going to do what I love to do. And we're going to take some risks. And that is what it's all about. I love it. I heard you say something like that in the commencement speech, like a, a yes. you know, uh, thing about you either are winning or you're learning. What? Yes. It's like you don't lose. I love You that. will and not lose. You know, one of the things that I thought was very cool is like your end of day review and how fear showed up in the following yes. week. Yes. Because I do actually think it is unusual for people to know how many ways fear shows up, right? So like that example, it's not like fear, like, oh my gosh, it's like all like the weird self-talk of like, ah, forget it. I'm not going to do it. It's not a big enough oh, yeah. It's like, that's a lie. That's fear. Trying to make yes. you play small you know so i do i think it's uh, just it's beautiful that you are a spokesperson for this and thanks for the reframe and the remembering yeah. there's no pressure if no. all the pressure is is just to do a little bit better than yesterday right That's so what you need like, to do yeah and, and most of us that are out there doing great things you're doing more than people ever will right yeah. and so you know self-sabotage what i was trying to do cancel my keynote that self-sabotage that's self-doubt yes. that is me feeling like an imposter and those are all of fear's best friends fear loves fear wants me to play it safe and to play small and to sit here in my office and you know and and hide i will not oh. hide i will yeah, crown I, myself I, I, exactly. and it, it like may it. bomb but it will still be fun oh exactly i love how you <laughs> self-sabotage perfectionism self-doubt procrastination gossip jealousy imposter syndrome excuses clutter even clutter. you know i just i think those are it just it's it's great so anyway okay fine you're on the pantry party show i guess we should do something let's go we'll go on a related. walk okay take us um, take us to your ways and basically you know one of the things that i had uh, dm'd you about is i know that uh a lot of people wonder what one would eat before a big yes. you know you know like when you're on the spot and you want to be quick and you want to be smart and you want to be present and you want to be mm -hmm. able to do improv and be funny and yeah. clever and like yeah so what do you have some go-to things Yes, yeah, so for sure. I um, It all depends on when the keynote is, but most of my keynotes are morning, like opening keynote experiences. So um, I don't like to eat a ton. It, maybe it's a little bit of pre-talk nerves, uh, the jitter, but there are usually two things I have on me at all time. So I've got Ooh. little baskets in my pantry. This ah! is my Marie. I try to be Marie Kondo. It doesn't always work. But I have one there. basket in particular that is full of travel essentials. So these are oh. things that I can grow grab when I pack and I could throw them in my carry-on so I'm not eating you know there's no excuse to not eat at the hotel or to say I don't have food or to eat like you know McDonald's or something bad for you so these are things I travel with all the time this is usually what I eat before every keynote ah, honestly a yeah. Lara bar and I don't go anywhere without my four sigmatic coffee oh, me too. Me too. I 
and I, I, I brew it at home and I put it in the little curry pots and I bring these bad boys with me. All you need is hot water. And um, it, it's, this is the think version. So it just helps you stay focused. I love it. It's so a, have you noticed the, I don't get the jitters or the tummy issues. That's, that, that's my big thing. Well, I mean, that we could talk forever about how I may have had a, a problem with coffee and it was oh, like yeah. my demise. Right. Um, but like that, just having a little half of a cup, but mostly adaptogen mushrooms in there. I yes. agree. I love the little sneak peek behind the scenes. Cause this is the stuff when people see a motivational speaker, yeah. you know, you're bigger than life, right? It is Ugh. like, she's actually a human and she's got to be doing human things before. Oh, for sure. Speaking. And so that's fun. It's this like, is one of my, don't doing. go anywhere without it. My yes. water bars. And then this is another thing I eat all the time. Cause I love fruit roll-ups, but they're not really good for you. So I, I do these sometimes right, it's yeah. just a hit of fruit. Yeah. And then I would say my go-to lunch, um, it's in front of me. Cause I'm going to eat when we get off. I'll probably have another little bite. Cause I just had a nibble before you, but avocado toast. So I do a half of a Dave's bagel that's... and I do avocado, a tomato slice and everything but the bagel oh, seasoning on go, top. Girl. So that's kind of avocado toast, even when I'm on the road and I have an afternoon keynote is um, like fuel. Eggs, uh, if I could put an egg on top of it, even better. So yeah. Hashtag put an egg on it. I love I love that. Now, you know, one of the things that I think is interesting is it's very root nice. So you answered the question, you were like before my morning, it's this and that, it's yeah. afternoon and it's lunch, it's this. Uh, do you find a lot of comfort in routines like that? Like, is that a, one of your strategies, sort of like, you know, how some people wear the same thing every day to take yeah. that decision fatigue out of it? Is that how you do food? Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny, I do that with my keynote outfits. I have a certain rotation of things, like I'll mix certain things up, but it's kind of like uniform so that I don't have to overthink. I know what looks good. Same with food. I want to like lessen the gap of failure, right? And so uh, to every, people ask all the time, like, you know, how do you stay fit on the road? How do you stay healthy on the road? How do you not gain weight? I'm like, I work for it. It's a choice. And if I want that freedom, I know I have to do the uncomfortable things required. So it means I pack snacks. I use my Peloton app and move my body in the gym before I talk. That's another ritual. I mean, it's funny. I've been doing the virtual stuff. And if I give a virtual keynote here in my office or anything that I'm hosting, I will run through my opening keynote routine, which is get up, move my body, have a light snack, my Four Sigmatic coffee. I always do a, a little bit of a, a an Amy Cuddy power pose. And then I, if you don't know about power posing, oh, that's yeah. a game changer. That's and then I always put a little Sia, uh, the song Unstoppable. Like I play that in my ear pods. And I love that. You know who just joined history. us is Angie Lee. Uh, Angie Lee said, oh my gosh, two of her favorite people. Oh, I love Angie Lee song. That's amazing. Dawn hey, the listen, Queen. I love I knowing Angie. your Sia song. Your Sia song is I cannot agree more. Do you have, by the way, a walk-up song? Because I have walk-up song for my yes. walk-up events. Do you have a walk-up song? Yeah, so my walk-up song as of late has been High Hopes by Panic at the Disco. Ah. And we cue it up right into the uh, into the chorus. If it's a really fun group and the vibe is right, we'll do like Good as Hell by Lizzo. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's those are kind of my two favorite songs. But my personal walk-up song is Unstoppable yep. by Sia. So backstage, and sometimes I'm in a bathroom stall, and I just literally put it in the ear pods. And it's like, it's not only become a ritual, but it's definitely like it gets my head in the game. And if you listen to the lyrics of that song, I think we all need that song more than ever. Because no matter what's going on, you are unstoppable. You just have to believe that you are. And you have to get the heck out of your own way. Does it mean it's going to be easy? No. But remember, you don't need to be fearless. You just need to be braver than yesterday. That's it. Disco ball. But braver yes. than yesterday. I love that. Hey, thank you for that behind the scenes. Of You're so welcome. Your prep. Because, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, nutrition and lifestyle stuff, yeah. I mean, we do have this magical human body that we need to work with us as opposed to against us. So, you know, I can see so many of the things that you do in prep are for a physical body, but then so much of it is for you, right? Just yeah, so nothing works if you don't. Nothing uh, works nothing if you works don't. Nothing works if you don't. You get it. I just love yeah. you. I um, love you. Else? Thank you, babe. Is there anything else from your pantry you need to show us? Or otherwise, you need to just tell us how we can uh, get the workbook, get the book, get on your virtual keynote, do all of the things. Um, the last thing I'll show you is, yeah. and this is the human moment, because I think we have to have a little naughty in our lives. 
Yes. Uh, I, I'm like, live an 80-20 lifestyle. 80% good, 20% naughty. Um, and so when I'm being naughty, if you haven't gotten these and you don't live by a Costco, these are magic, crack magic, um, sea salt caramels, dark, dark chocolate sea salt caramels. You better watch it. You better watch out. I'm probably going to have one of these before I have lunch after I get off of this. Um, they are my guilty pleasure. And the reason I end with that is I think we also have to have fun and let ourselves off the hook. And if we're being good and we're working our tails off, have a little fun. Don't take life too seriously. And um, damn, eat a chocolate if you want a chocolate. Amen. I mean, seriously, though, amen. We got balance all wrong when people talk about balance. It's like, uh-uh. Balance yes. is not how much broccoli you have on your plate. Balance yeah. is like, joy is a super nutrient, people. I agree. It is like, yes, it has to be naughty and fun and, yeah. and discipline and all the things, right? Yep. I love you. It all I works love you. Together. I love you. Oh well, God. this is this has been amazing. Thank you for having me on your platform. And I, I'm so excited to meet your beautiful tribe. And I want to tell you, I'm so proud of the work you're doing. Uh, you are a light. Keep it going. I think we need more uh, women out there brave enough to do their own thing. Because here's the thing about confidence and courage. It is so contagious. Fear is contagious. Panic is contagious. Hate is contagious. Self-doubt is contagious. But so is courage and so is confidence. And so when I see you be brave and when I see you be confident and put yourself out there and throw pantry parties, it gives me the permission to do something fun and creative for myself and my business. And we need more role models out there like that. You have this opportunity in front of you to be a fear role model and you're doing it. So girl, I'm oh so proud gosh. of you. Yeah, I love that. I'm so proud of you. And so now if people need and they I know they need it, yeah. they need more at Judy Holler. What can they do right now? Well, I would say go to the Instagram. That's probably yep. where I like to hang out the most. So you can follow me up here on the Instagram. And then, of course, on Amazon, just put Judy Holler in the search bar and you can find uh, my book. It's really hard to miss. It's a hot pink book. Cold Fear is my homeboy. I think you'll have a lot of fun with that. I wrote that book for you. I wrote that book for times like these. And then, of course, if you want to go deeper, we have the Fear Boss Project. That gray stripe is just, this is my sample copy. So, um, you, you know, find me on Amazon. Hang out with me on Instagram. And uh, my website. And, well, link in bio on Instagram. Has yes, all the I think that's the, the link in bio. To all the things. Just go to at Judy Holler. Your link in bio. <laughs> has your virtual keynote coming, the link to your book, the link to your work, All of it. and your freaking podcast. Oh, Girl, thank you. you God, I keep forgetting. I'm like, yeah, I have a podcast. You're <laughs> all the things. You're all the things. I love you so, so much. So are you. Hashtag thank you for having boss. me. Hashtag Bye. back at you, babe. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, that was another wonderful session of the Pantry Party with at Judy Holler. Uh, talk about inspiration, right? I mean, legit. So Fear is My Homeboy is her book. Her podcast is The Fear Boss Show. Her workbook is The Fear Boss Project. Get a theme here. She is The Fear Boss. And uh, you know what? Her ideas, two things that really stuck out, right, or stood out. One, daily fear experiments, right? Get on her uh, list so that you could get this printout of her daily planner. Oh, my gosh. It's the best. It's, it's really the best. It's, it's so creative but meaningful. Um, and then also the idea that you just have to be a little braver than yesterday. You don't have to be crushing everything, right? It's just like a little braver than yesterday. God, that was fun. Oh my gosh. So the pantry party show just keeps delivering. Oh yeah. And we did see in her pantry with the cute baskets and uh, we got a, a chance to get a sneak peek of what she does before I talk. I've got my things that I do and we're very similar in uh, what we do and how we fuel uh, both of our physical body and our mental body. So anyway, is it a mental body? I don't know. Anyway, I love you so much. And until tomorrow, I'm sending you high immunity vibes, big love, and lots and lots of kisses.